safer6.co.uk sponsors of the haze out well good evening hello it is thursday it is the 11th of july and tonight we're going to be talking about two days of emotion and it, it's the fullest the haze hour has ever been it is absolutely the fullest the haze hour has ever been in the cat house we have the effervescent loveliness, the bubblacious beer, but that is the one and only Sav. In the doghouse tonight, and I'm going to I'm gonna put them up full... Oh, God, it's crashed. Hey, we're gone. It's going to be one of those nights. Come up, you pig, and work. Um, where are we? Yes. In, 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 the, in the cat house, in the doghouse, in the little one, we have Mr. Gary Dibley, who's... La I watched your show last night, Gary, and that was... Um, yeah. You were a bit upset, were you? I was a, a, a little bit passionate, should we say. I think that's the word that I would use. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and in the studio, in real life, at Pitcham, <laughs> look, we've got, we've got Keith, the one and only Keith. So it's the four of us tonight. And we're going we're gonna to just chew the fat a little bit and talk about what's been going on and why now is the time. And I've got some footage from Brussels as well and i've got no idea which camera i'm talking to now i'm here to tell you sav and i are wrecked are we not we certainly are we, we look you can hear the croak in our voice and that's not the menthol is it no <laughs> no did she a tonsils are suntanned that's how hot it was <laughs> um but all will be revealed now remember how we do this it's the here's hour it's one two three and then off we go or will oh god i didn't i it's sorry it. if you hear whip whops it's because i've forgotten to do everything right but we're gonna get we'll we'll fill you in give you all the griff and tell you about what happened in the house of lords this morning that is all on this episode of one two three the, the haze hour, hour. And here we are, live on Thursday, the 11th of July, at uh, slightly after nine o'clock, talking about what went on in Brussels, um, what what went on in the House of Lords, bringing you a little bit of video, and when it's finished, it's finished. That's the way it's going to be. Um, Sav. Yes? You first. What kind of a day did you have in Brussels yesterday? Let's leave the decision out of it, and let's talk about 250-odd vapours from all over Europe. What did you make of that? It was awesome. There's no other word for it. It was absolutely awesome. I was so proud. It was amazing. Yes. Proud is the word. Proud is absolutely the word. When you see all of those people coming together with a like mind to actually do something about something they're passionate about, it actually... It, it, I've cut 10 minutes of video and I, I'm... I'm sorry it's not brilliantly well done, but have a watch of this. You'll love it. Work, you swine. No, that's the wrong one. I'm clicking the wrong button. I'll click the right button this time. Here we go. Nicotine replacement therapy. What's all that about? Do they want to kill us? It seems yes without a doubt. We can smoke cigarettes or cigars, they're fine for all of us. They want to take our research and won't lift the ban on snuts. But now we flexed our muscles to take them on in Brussels. We're gonna burst 200 black balloons. One, two, three, four. 
Got our E6 and our favorite juice. We're gonna take a little trip today. We're going to some bankers to catch a Euro star, and pretty soon we'll all be on our way. We're going to Brussels, look at Brussels town. The vapors will be arriving soon. We are all united, we're coming on, invited to protest and to burst a black moon. One, two, three, four. Black balloons. Black balloons. Black balloons. Black balloons. One, two, three, four. Cigarettes are dangerous, everybody knows. They kill at least 2,000 every day. We vapors are determined to make our voices heard. Please don't take our easy away. Our protest will be peaceful. We want the world to know that vaping will surely come to pass. Politicians just don't get it. They want our E6 ban. They've got all their fat heads up there. One, Ooh. two, three. We're sick of being treated like lots of naughty kids It's the kind of thing that every grown-up hates Please remove your heads from where the sun don't shine We really don't need your nanny states Nicotine replacement therapy What's all that about? Do they want to kill us? It seems yes without a doubt We can smoke cigarettes or cigars They're fine for all of us They want to take our research And won't lift the ban on stunts But now we flexed our muscles To take them on in Brussels We're gonna burst 200 like balloons We've all got our E6 and our favorite juice. We're gonna take a little trip today. We're going to some bankers to catch a Euro star, and pretty soon we'll all be on our way. We're going to Brussels, look at Brussels town. The vapors will be arriving soon. We are all united, we're coming on, invited to protest and to burst a black moon. One, two, three, four. Black balloons. Black balloons. Black balloons. Black balloons. One, two, three, four. Cigarettes are dangerous, everybody knows. They kill at least 2,000 every day. We vapors are determined 
to make our voices heard, please don't take our message away. Our protest will be peaceful, we want the world to know that they think will surely come to pass. Politicians just don't get it, they want our E6 band, they've got all their fat heads up there. One, two, three, four. Blackbird. We're sick of being treated like lots of naughty kids It's the kind of thing that every grown-up hates Please remove your heads from where the sun don't shine We really don't need your nanny state We're gonna take a little trip today We're going to some bankers to catch a Eurostar And pretty soon we'll all be on our way We're going to Brussels, look at Brussels town The vapors will be arriving soon We are all united, we're coming on Invited to protest and to burst a black moon One, two, three And there you go. That is it's just a very, very thrown together selection of footage um, which John Derricott shot for uh, for Jerry Stimson. Um, Keith? Very impressive, that. Wasn't it, Really Rob? impressive. It's, it, it, it's bringing a lump to my throat. So, <laughs> good. what does it mean to you? It, it was just awesome to watch. And it's, it, again, it. I've got goosebumps when it started popping the balloons. I just got goosebumps right up my arms. It was just brilliant. It was uh, it was absolutely amazing to see, and I, I'm I'm really looking forward to the video uh, that Andy Sutton puts together because there'll be all sorts of different camera angles. We're giving this footage coming from everywhere and all over the place. So it, it that the noise was immense. MEPs heard it in 
the, the European Parliament and they were asking what it was. And Marina Yanakadakis, who you saw out there, uh, Chris Davis, um, Rebecca Taylor and Martin Callanan that came out, went back in and told them what the noise was, why there were 250 odd people there. There was what, about 70 from the UK? There yeah. was 50, 60 from France. The G Germans were there. There was Belgians, lots and lots of Belgians, uh, Greek, Italian, all Spanish. There was Spanish there. Um, there, were, there were people there from all over Europe that make the point and the point was made and then watching Gary I know I, I couldn't watch it live mate I'm sorry about that I, I really wish I had been able to but um, watching what you came out with last night after all of that to find that the composite amendment 58 the one that we wanted got beaten by 45 votes to 25 and I know a lot of people would have been a little bit down about that I think that that was the uh, the sentiment that was expressed was it not Gary it was, yeah, and uh, I, I think, I mean, I, I was sort of trying to catch up um, all day, obviously, you know, at work and, and this and the other, and, and I think, you know, when, when they carried, I think, 57, it was Mark that posted in chat, essentially, we're screwed, um, and it was sort of, it was it was shocking, in a way, because although although we've, we, you know, everybody has sort of, uh, you know, been talking about it for a long time, and and you sort of hope it's like anything, isn't it? You hope for the best, and and um, to, to to actually it sort of struck a chord, and um, you know I won't say it again, but it I might, I might, it pissed me off, Dave, to be honest with you, um, and uh, it it did sort of uh, you know it was it was a a moment of Jesus, what do we do now, um, and. You know, I think that come out last night <laughs> in a way. I, I don't. I don't normally. You, you know me. I, I don't normally show my uh, underpants. Yeah, because uh, I don't have them on. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but last night, I would have quite happily stood up and, and showed the MEPs my. <laughs> yes, yes, as, as well I can imagine. But the thing about it is, the thing about it is, once um, once all the balloons had been popped, we spent a long, long time talking with Martin Callan, Chris Davis, Rebecca Taylor, and yep. Marina Yanakadakis. Uh, and I hope I've pronounced that right, Marina, if you're watching, I'm, it is good, as close as I can get at the minute. And before the vote happened, we knew that it was likely to be defeated. Uh, that was the case. And I asked Martin, I asked Rebecca, I asked Chris, what do we need to do now? And the answer, is relatively straightforward remember what we were saying before that there are two tracks to this yeah one is um the the, the parliament itself it's going to go to the plenary committee the, the the it's not a committee it goes to the plenary to the whole of the body of the meps now what we've got to do now is find out who our friends are and who needs educating our friends we need to find out from them what they need us to do. So we're now talking about contacting your own MEPs, and you've all got more than one, and you need to be writing to them and ask what their stance is. That's the first thing we need to know. If they're Labour, we've got a fair idea, haven't we, really? Yeah. Yeah. Because they couldn't be asked to come out and talk. And I'm using Clive Bates' words, so I won't get wrong off Chris, because Clive Bates is a hero. Um, they couldn't be asked to come out and find out why there were upwards of 200, 250 people out there wanting to make their voices heard. You're going to have to get hold of your own Labour MEPs and make your voice heard. Be firm, be polite. Be firm, but be polite. Find out what their stance is, whether they're Labour, Green, Conservative, Lib Dem, it makes no difference. Find out what their stance is. And then ask the question of them, of your own MEP. The ones that are supportive, what do they need you to do in your locale? It now comes down to what we do locally. And I know you were saying uh, before, Keith, that you know we really need to be looking at the local press. Yes. Um, <clears throat> you write to your local press. If you can if you if, if you've got the the wherewithal, if you have the capability, write a piece the way a journalist would write a piece and submit it to the newspaper. 
be as factual as you can um, but let your local newspapers have all of this kind of stuff if you can if you can put a photograph with it so much the better and that will get local news happening and that's what we need to do we need to build this groundswell of local news because as we've discovered MEPs need to be voted back in and they need to be voted back in in 2014 as in May of next year now is the time they're going to be campaigning for votes let's us campaign as well and let's try and if you like push the votes to the ones that are going to be supportive and the ones that aren't let's push the votes away <coughs> from them that would, <coughs> that would work wouldn't it was the labor stance orchestrated do you think had they been told yes had... yes right. i think there was a whip on it now i can't confirm it i can't say that it's exactly right i can't be 100 percent certain but i'm 99.999 percent certain and that's a level of purity that's good enough for me is it good enough for you gary it's good enough for me though i tell you, i don't know the, the one thing that sort of was for me i think the, the the if you like the nail in the coffin yesterday was was the announcement that they may be getting a 12 12 percent pay rise that that sort of you know it that was was if you like the final kick in the uh in, in the danglies yeah um and <laughs> if they're gonna have to work for that 12 percent pay rate. i know a lot of them have sort of stood up and said we don't want it um you know we're rule for the uh local communities and this that, and the other well obviously they're not um because i'm part of their local community and they're doing absolutely nothing for me so as you say this is the time that we need to stand up and and be strong together and it needs a lot lot more people um in the vaping community to stand up and 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 take that stance and and you know realistically where where there are you know vendor outlets a right get get your local vendor if there's a shop arrange a big gathering at that shop now i'm sorry i'm speaking out of town but no, you're i not. think the if, if you're a local vendor and you've got a shop you've got a customer base gather that customer base at that shop and invite your local MP down and make him understand from all the people that are there that not being funny we are voting potentially for you and your pay rise um, you know you are going to lose us and you're going to lose a lot more like us and it is that that I believe that that is, is the way we've got to take it now it needs to be localized and if there are vendors if there are vending shops arrange it in your local vicinity and get the press down there get the people down there tell the press you're going to put us out of business exactly right the thing about it is it's a local fight now it, although it's national it's a whole load of small battles because what we need to do is win the hearts and minds of every last electronic cigarette user out there if we've got 1.3 million people making a noise to MPs and MEPs, that's a very, very difficult noise to ignore. And that's, that's the next step. That's the first of a lot of steps. But there's, there's good news to come out of all of this. And we'll share that with you right after the break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere <coughs> because I think you'll like what Sav's going to tell you. Won't they, Sav? Yes. They will. They love it. And, and I've just realised I had the wrong camera on. <laughs> That's the one I want, yeah. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Um, forgive both Sav and I have got frazzle brains today. Um, forgive, forgive the messing up. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes and then we'll fill you in on what happened this morning in the House of Lords. You will like this a lot. Safer6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Out.
6. Sponsors of the Haze Hour. And we are back in the room live here on Thursday of the 11th of July. It's the Here's Hour with myself, Dave Dawn, Keith, Sav and Gary's dropped out. Oh, we've lost to Gary. We've lost to Gary. He'll come back. He'll come back. And when he, when he comes back, we'll bring him in. But he's, he's gone for the moment. Um, after we got back from Brussels, uh, Sav and I attended the House of Lords. That, oh, he's back. Hello, Gary. Hello. What happened there? <coughs> God knows. Ah, well, he's not letting on. <laughs> um, yeah, this morning we attended uh, what's known as a parliamentary briefing uh, that was hosted by Lord Hutton, that Lord Hutton, the Lord Hutton that everybody's heard of, um, and featured Baroness Findlay, uh, three of the guys from Elite, Jerry Stimson, um, Smokey Joe, as people will know him, uh, Oliver Kershaw, in other words, um, and, 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 and a number of us, Lynn Dawkins, uh, Peter Hayek, Professor Peter Hayek. And we were there essentially to brief um, the Lords and the MPs, um, and John Pawsey was there as well, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and we were there to brief MPs on e-cigs uh, because, as we found out very quickly after we went in there, they didn't really know an awful lot about it. But possibly, uh, slightly more importantly, Jeremy Mean was there and so that gave us a chance to have a little bit of a chat with him and find out where he was coming from and perhaps let him know where we were coming from too. Jeremy Mean opened the, uh, uh, it was a discussion rather than a debate and basically went through exactly what you've heard on the interviews that he's done for the BBC and Sky and ITV and everything else and he was, he was briefing um, the, the Lords and the MPs that were there about e -cigs. What he hadn't quite picked up on was when we went in, the Lords thought that an e -cig was something that looked like a cigarette. Um, and indeed, one of the Labour peers that was there was saying, so they, they look like a cigarette, do they? And I pulled that one out. That's an EVIC. And that EVIC has a puri tank on top and a bloody great big drip tip and he took a look at that and he said it's a bloody sonic screwdriver how does is that a shisha pipe i said no 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 the liquid that you see is exactly the same as the liquid that's in the little one only it will last me all day where as one of the little ones won't at which point in time mr mean clapped eyes on that and then looked away hurriedly um, and we carried on. He, he made his presentation and uh, then Adrian Everett from uh, Elite got a chance to put his side of the story and, and, and tell them, you know, what, what Elite's take on it was. And then Lord Hutton opened the floor out and started taking contributions from everybody else, basically. And Sav, I'm going to uh, let you take the story up from there, if you will. I need to go back just a tiny bit because I have to tell them what Lord Hutton's opening comments to Jeremy Mean were. I think you should. Yes, and um, I thought this was amazing. He said he was most unconvinced with the need for medicalisation. Yes. I wanted to hug him. I, was, I liked that. I really liked that. Yes. But then... When he was taking comments, we had some amazing comments from Jerry and Linda. Was it Linda? Lynn, Lynn Dawkins. Lynn, Lynn. And then Dave stood up. And what Dave didn't say, this was a breakfast. So there was food being passed around and much like a bun and a bit of pineapple. When Dave started talking, the food all stopped. And all eyes turned. And I watched Jeremy Mean shrink in his seat as Dave asked him about nothing currently on the market would 
meet the standards that they're setting. So that would effectively mean the e-cig market would be shut down come 2016. And he shrunk. Lord Hutton turned to him. Everybody turned to him. And he didn't have an answer to that, did he, Dave? No, no, he had no answer to that. Um, because there is no answer to that. Um, and my software's crashed again. Um, so, Sav, you're still on screen. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, he acknowledged, in fact, that the question I'd asked um, was right. That, and if I may, uh, I also made the point that in so doing, there is only one dog in the race at the minute. And that dog is owned and trained by British American Tobacco. At which point, when Lord Hutton heard that, and when Baroness Findlay heard that, they both raised their eyebrows and looked at Mr. Mean, looked at each other and said, we didn't know that. Isn't that right, Sav? That is also spot on. Yes. So the fact of the matter is, it would appear that our MPs and our Lords in the UK are not as fully briefed as they could be. Now, here's some things. Your MP you need to talk to and you need to sit in front of your MP. You need to actually go to the surgery and sit down and explain what your position is. Because the fact of the matter is, as Jeremy Mean said in the briefing this morning, and as he agreed, there's nothing on the market but what BAT has. Come the fateful day, if it all goes the wrong way, effectively, it's a ban. They get taken off the market. There was one little light in that tunnel, though, wasn't there, Sav? Sorry, I wasn't listening. Oh, OK. <laughs> at, at one point, after we'd asked this question, and he, he, he was a little bit flustered and he'd gone bright red, mm -hmm. he did say, he did say that there would be a marketing authorisation for, and what word was it he used? He used juice, e-juice. Yes. He Not said... Liquid or fluid or nicotine, but juice. Yes. He said that there might be, it would be possible to get a marketing authorization for juice. And what I'm seeing is at first we thought it was all going to be cartos, if that. And now every step that's being taken is being taken backwards. And I think. The MHRA is so desperate to control what's going on, it's going to make concessions. I think they know they can't win. I think they know that there are so many of us out there, if we can get everybody together singing off the same hymn sheet, we can win this. What's, what's your take, Gary? I think it is, it is the case, Dave, and, and now is the time that everybody does need to, to, to pitch in. I think... Uh, Last night I was I was uh, taking part in the RY4 radio thing um, with with Mark as well Mark Shaw, Rusty and and Tim, and uh, and we were sort of all echoing the same thing. Um, it would have been lovely to to, to see two thousand people in in Brussels. Um, you know the, the people everybody's got commitments. We understand that, but now is the time that everybody needs to, to, to take a stand and um, it has to, I, I believe, you know, there was talk about, you know, the converting the people that might go to e-cigs and, and I'm saying, well, in my view, that's, that's a bit pointless. We've got to start looking at the people that are vaping now. They are the people that's going to affect the most our current vendors and, um, and, and everybody who, who partakes in a forum need to understand that they've, they've got to do something about this now. And, mm. and that's, that's the big thing. There's a lot of people um, that sort of sit on the fence and, and watch what's being said and, and maybe agree, but just won't do anything about it. And they'll realize if it gets taken away from them one day that, you know, crikey, uh, I can't get that anymore. Um, it, there has to be a, 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 you know, a clear and concise and, and united way forward now. Yes, yes, I agree. Well, Keith, I know you, you're kind of not an activist, are you? <coughs> no. 
<coughs> what, do you, what do you make of what you've heard so far? I mean, what, what action would you consider taking as, as, I've always considered you to be like the man on the clap omnibus, the, the man in the street, right. you know, yes. not an activist, yes. hobbyist and what have you. What, what, what's your take on it? Right, first of all, this Lord Hutton, is, is, can I ask, is that John Hutton? Yes. The ex-Labour Minister? Yes. Always came across as a very sensible sort of guy, from what I remember of him. I think he? that's the take that Sav and I have on him as well. Right. Mm. One of the things that occurred to me, would there be any point, or is it practical, to be sending some kind of literature to every MP something that would really stand out and draw their attention in some sort of succinct way to you, the issues yeah actually you, you I mean I know there are 600 and odd MPs but mm. to send some kind of um, uh, really stand out sort of literature that they, that they would read and well, Any point in that? Th there is. One of, one of the points that Baroness Findlay made, um, and, and she made it quite forcibly, she said that her inbox over the last few months has been jammed solid with the personal experiences of individual vapors. And she, she now knows everything she needs to know. She knows all of that. She knows the personal stories, and there's other things that she needs to do. But what she has asked for and what Oliver Kershaw, uh, I believe, couriered round this afternoon, as he said he was going to, was the facts and the figures. And my feeling is that our MPs, our members of parliament, that we can go to the surgeries for, they need to know the personal stories and they need to know the facts and figures as well. So we need to be armed with those. And one of the... Um, one of the steps that we need to take is to put a central repository together of all of the studies. Um, and we, we also need to, to, to annotate them, if you know what I mean. But you see, you're going into the recess, David, that surgeries won't be taking place. It's be the, be because Parliament will be going into uh, um, you know, the holiday period yes. before very long. That's right. So it's going to be late September, October before you can make personal contact with your MP and I mean with the best will in the world despite what Gary's saying you know people are not going to do that Then we're not going to reach 600 and odd MPs are we well without actually dealing with them directly and sending them something well that, that's exactly that is exactly what we've got to do that is exactly what we've got to do. I cannot conceive that there is an MP or an MEP in the whole of the UK that doesn't have vapours in their constituency. Am, am right. I? Well, you're bound to be. You're yes. bound to be. Yes. Yes. And it, it very simply, we've all got to do this. If we don't, if we don't carry the fight on now, we've lost. Am I right? We've got, we, 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 we can't just go, oh, well, pff, that's it, you know, and give up. We've got to carry on now. Now, when I was talking with Martin and Rebecca and the rest of Chris Davis and the rest of the MEPs over there, I might have been a little bit foolish, but I said, look, you are the guys that know what needs to happen. Let us know. Tell us what you need us to do and we will make it happen and um, that was what they said get in touch find out who your friends are who are the friendly mps and make sure that they're 100 percent on site find out what they think you need to do locally in order to really drum it all up whether they're mps or meps we need to be in touch with them we need to make this thing work we've got to pull together as many of the 1.3 million as we can I, I, i've been I've been so taken by what happened yesterday when we went across to Brussels. It was a marvellous sight to see. And while I was editing it, after all of those balloons went off, that choked me up again. I mean, it choked me up on the day and it's choked me up again because it's, it, it's so meaningful. And I can't wait for, for Andy Sutton to get it all together. And we need to be getting that out to all the news outlets. We need to be playing it in every 
e store throughout the country every vendor every vendor whether it's online whether it's bricks and mortar it doesn't whether it's market stall it doesn't matter how it is everybody but everybody's got to do their best to get every vapor in the uk involved now and we've got that little bit of time there's a couple of weeks before they go on recess so that we can, we can kind of make the uh the overtures if you like and then there's september however long in september we've got when they come back to work to actually get it done to get the documentation to them so we've got that period of time in between when we can start and put things together um i'm going to take another short break and then we'll come back and between the four of us we'll, we'll wind this up uh, it might be a little bit shorter than it usually is but i think sav you look as though you're ready to nod off love <laughs> And I'm not far behind I mean, you, I've got to be honest. In the meantime, this local press ID is a good one. Oh, I think we've got to do that. Um, we've got to uh, do that. Uh, and, you know, by hitting the local press, that often leads to regional and national press coverage as well. Absolutely does, yes. Absolutely does. Because we know the IT, we would have seen on the video, that the guy that was videoing was being videoed videoing was from ITV so we know they've got the footage we just don't know what they're going to do with it we'll, we'll take a quick break and uh, when we come back we'll get this all wrapped up and uh, and put to bed and then <coughs> the fight starts this is round two see you in a couple of minutes And we are back in the room. Um, I'm going to throw it across to Sav because she's, you know what Sav's like. She's, it's habitually <laughs> chat related. Know. And I say ably abetted and aided by Chris, Kat tonight. The pair of them are in cahoots. They're working superbly well. Um, Sav? There are loads and loads and loads of suggestions coming from chat, but I must read something that Dick Puddle quotes we've been talking about. And he says, here's how to organise a mass lobbying of MPs at Westminster. Inform them via a group that you intend to come to Parliament and exercise your right to green card MPs. They have to meet you, so let them know in advance and they will give you an audience. Okay. Um, um, we've also had Lord Barbie has said, don't know if it's possible, but Keith has a point. However, in September, it's party conference time. Is it possible to try and get a delegation together to try and get a voice at the party conference or to attend the fringe meetings there? Don't know how to do it, but got to be worth a try. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. All of this um, is sounding good. Yeah, Blaze has said there are leaflets and resources that are available at e savelives.co.uk. Um, and a question from FMRL who says, so if we concentrate on the House of Lords and forget about the MPs, can we get anything that the MHRA are trying to push blocked at a higher level? No. In a word, no. Um, it, it, it has to come 
unfortunately it's got to, it's like everything else it's got to go through the commons and the lords the lords will advise the commons and then the commons has got to take it on um if the lords is, is very 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 insistent then it goes the way it is but this green card if we if we green card all of them i wonder if we get all 640 630 i think that's the figure that springs to mind it's it's 600 and something yes i mean if we could green card a lot of them oh yeah. ha, has there been any attempt to try and lobby the secretary of state or one of his ministers the secretary personally? of state for health yes um yeah i think everybody's been uh, everybody's been having a go and we, what we've been getting up to now is stop replies um we need again we need to get meetings with them but again what i got from this morning was that lord hutton is looking to do that kind of thing right can he's, we, he's not a happy bunny can is we he? find out what constituencies the secretary of state and his ministers represent easily done i would have thought people in those constituencies will know I mean, those constituents, constituencies could be particularly targeted. Oh, easily. Well, that's a thought. That's, that's, it's, it, there's, the, the fact is, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There is a lot of work that needs to be done. And it's the people on the ground, you know. I can't write to any MP that isn't mine or any MEP that isn't mine and expect them to deal with me as though I was a constituent none of us can so the constituents of these what would you call them high-ranking people i suppose yes the, you are the ones that have got to do it you've got to go to the surgeries you've got to sit down you've got to tell them and um, you've also got to tell them you know that they're going to be he's going to be getting letters from mps all over the land wanting answers and we want the proper answers sab is there anything else coming in Yes, um, one thing someone just mentioned about Mark Posey, and we forgot to say he was actually at that meeting today as well. Yeah, I got his name um, wrong and said John. I'm, I do yes, apologise. Mark, Mark Posey. Posey. Yes, um, but Dick Puddlecourt again has um, elaborated a little bit more on what he means by green card, and he said, here's the explanation from Parliament. Um, the Parliament website says, a green card is a card that you fill in if you want to see your MP at the Palace of Westminster. If you want to visit your MP at the House of Commons... You go through the public entrance of the building and fill out your details on a green card in the central lobby. The officials in the building will then make every possible attempt to find the MP and ask him or her to meet you in the central lobby. If the MP cannot be found, a message is left. Right. So what we're seeing by the sounds of thing is if 20 or 30 constituents of whoever happen to go down and each one fills a green card in, then the likelihood is that the meeting is going to be arranged. Uh, that That is such a brilliant idea. I really like that idea. Yeah, there's lots of ideas coming from chat. Um, one idea which I think is brilliant is um, record your thoughts and things on video and you could forward them to the SWAF campaign. Yes. Uh, also, there's been people mentioning if question time is being filmed in your area, see if you can get on there. Yes. There are loads and loads and loads. Um, well, but the one that I also think is really important, which you mentioned earlier, is getting in at the local news levels. Yes. Definitely. Very much so. We and just I know had Newcastle on yes. question time last week or the week before. It, it was last week on the, on the Thursday night, and I couldn't get, unfortunately. Uh -huh. Gary, have you got any, any other ideas, or is this making you feel a bit better than you were last night? Oh yeah, a lot better than I was last night. Though, to be honest, with you. <laughs> I think it it now, now is 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 the like I was saying last night. You know, we've had the negative, and now is time for the positive. Um, I mean, the one the one thing that I was sort of saying last night would it, would it be worth um, looking at, at taking out a you know a a page in a national newspaper, which obviously requires funding. Um, almost a, a challenge to, to the MPs, MEPs um, for response. Um, I know that's a big task and, and, and would require something, but a, a national coverage that is a, a paid for advert getting our point across, um, you know, in, in the national press. Um, you know, if we're paying for it, um, I'm sure, 
you know, with, with all the fundraising that, that's happened over the you know the past <clears throat> months and, and weeks, I'm sure we could we could do something you know that, that would fund something like that. I think that's a good idea. I think it's Excellent a brilliant idea. idea. I think it's a brilliant idea. Um, the 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 other point I was going to make when we talk about targeting the constituencies of the health ministers, why not target the constituencies of all the cabinet? You know that's not a particularly big task. Uh, no, it sounds like a very good task. So that every cabinet minister is 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 getting. You know something that, that that's targeting it. Well, yeah, and, and given what was uh, on the front of the uh, conservative website, the blog, that, that, that Martin Callanan wrote, um, it would appear that we've got the support of the Conservatives, certainly in Europe, and I see no reason why that shouldn't be duplicated in the UK. We need to be looking at that kind of thing. And let's face it, they and the Lib Dems are in government, and who's given us the support in Europe? The Tories and the Lib Dems. And well. UKIP, but now, and, and this I've got to say, right? This I've got to say. On Tuesday, we were told that a UKIP member who is a member of Envy and has only been there once wouldn't be turning up to vote, even after UKIP, UKIP had promised that he would. We got the information, everybody tweeted and got hold of him and made him go. That's the level of power that I'm going to call us a movement. That's the level of, uh, level of power the ESIG movement has. Our tweets more or less forced a UKIP member of parliament to go and vote and vote the right way. Okay, it didn't swing it for us, but that's what we can do. And that level of power is phenomenal. If we use the resources that we have, and that basically means us, if we pull together, I think there's nothing we can't do. But I'm, I'm quite upbeat about this. Um, it, it's, I'm optimistic. I think we can win. Sav? Yeah, totally agree. I think, I feel, after yesterday, when we all heard it was we're all so disheartened for a very short period of time mm. but it we all lifted again because it was like no this is not the end we can do this definitely and watch and chat there is far too much to read out they're constantly talking there's ideas flying what about this did we think about that maybe we could try this all the time we can win this safer six stars has just said we can and will win this and he and he is exactly right um, see another thought that comes to mind how many active trade union officials are e-cig users because that of course gives an access to mps particularly uh, labor mps are we saying that we're going to use the trade unions to force Labour to do something? What a good idea. Well, <laughs> it, 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 it's just a thought because you, you, you find, you know, you'll, you'll find that officials in unions uh, generally have very easy access to MPs, particularly Labour MPs. And it's Labour MPs, you say, that are sort of showing no interest or or activity in this. So, how many ESIG users are officials in unions? Keith, you're a devious man, I like it. I love it. I think <laughs> it's brilliant. I mean, that's, uh, that's worth thinking about. It's, 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 it's definitely worth thinking about. I didn't realise you were quite so devious. When it comes to political things, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that would be a, that would be worth a try. You know, everybody thinks that you're just a mild-mannered man that nicks my e cigs and it, it turns <laughs> out you're a devil in disguise. I hadn't thought of using the unions. I mean, the links between the cooperative movement and the Labour Party, all that sort of thing. Oh, my mum had a co-op card. Uh, the, you know, the GMB, Unite, all have strong political links. That's f fabulous. That is fabulous. Gary, what do you make of that? It's, it is good, isn't it? And I mean, I think that 
the, the way to the unions is obviously through through the membership as well. So yes, uh, exactly. If, if, if you're a uh, you know a, a union member and, and people are making it hard for you to uh, to use e-cigs at work, take it up with your union and and uh, you know. <laughs> so no, that's class. I love that idea. Kid. It is. <laughs> It is, you know, it is, and, and that could be a way. Um, <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I, I think it's brilliant. I hadn't thought of that at all. Put it there. Yeah. What a man. Devious. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Have an e -sync. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> a pink one. <laughs> now, that, that, yeah, that would really, uh, yes. <laughs> Go on, you like it, really. Give it a drag, I'll tell you. I did. Menthol. <laughs> you as well, eh? <laughs> Not just me then. I love it. It wasn't just me. Um, I, we're going to have to wrap this up. We we absolutely are going to have to wrap it up. But I I, I wanted to say something, um, and this it's personal. Um, my connectivity has been absolutely crap the last couple of days. But when I got back in the house, I have had so many tweets emails skype messages of people being enormously supportive you all know who you are um not just of me of the whole team everybody involved with all of this and i just want to say how touched i am not touched that way um I, I can't i can't say thank you enough um i'm so proud of everybody the way everybody's pulling together i think it's absolutely amazing i think you're all legends you're all vaping legends and and from all of us what are you doing you're on the wrong camera too am i Which, yeah. oh bloody can, can i can i just say what the three of you are to be congratulated in the time the effort the passion that you put into this and continue to put into it it's it's the people um, keith it's the people yeah but you know the effort, the coordination, um, getting the message across is down to you people. Uh, uh, it, it has to be done. It, just, it, it has to be done. I, I, I like I say, am I on the right camera now, Sav? You are, yes. Right, thank you. <laughs> My brain is fried. Um, <laughs> I've never been so proud to belong to a group of people the way I'm proud to belong to this group of people, the vapors of the UK, of Europe. Yesterday swelled my chest. I'm, st I'm We need to say goodnight. Yes, not often you were stuck for words. No, it's fairly rare. Um, people, thank you. Fight the good fight. Vape on, vape hard. And we'll keep saying this now. Don't let the bastards grind you down. Tune in on Sunday night for Dave's Tackle Box. Until then, from Dave, from Keith, from Sav and from Gary, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being you. Thank you so much for being so supportive and so active. I think I love you all. And we'll see you next time. From all of us, good night. Good night. Good night.